All right, so in this video, I'm gonna uh, draw the line, the connection between financial terrorism and the possibility of asylum. Now, in case you're wondering what financial terrorism is, each one feels terrorized in a different way. But if, let's say you're, you made a mistake, right? it's a small mistake, but the penalties are draconian. It can drastically impact your life. It could put you behind bars. Uh, again, a simple mistake leads to extreme consequences. There's no way of recouping or correcting the problem in a straightforward manner. It destroys your life and you feel it's unfair. You made a very small mistake and the consequences are way beyond. It's, there's no comparison. There's no linkage it's very draconian. So when, let's say an entity, I'm not saying a government could be a government, and I'm not naming any countries, because as I said in the beginning, each one feels terrified or threatened differently by different situations. So maybe you're in a country where you are feeling terrorized, victimized by small things, and you're being prosecuted, or there's chances of you uh, spending the rest of your life behind bars. Maybe it's a draconian government. It's sitting, you know, waiting to get you. So that is what financial terrorism is. Terrorizing the public based on severe, drastic consequences of economic or financial activities or transactions or affairs. When you talk about the asylum in a traditional sense, let's say as a third world country, is political persecution, not financial persecution, but political persecution, this religious persecution. So those people, poor people, migrants, asylees, flee their home countries because their governments aren't functioning correctly in some cases. Uh, they feel terrorized and victimized. Not all population seeks asylum, right? So 90% of the population will live with it. They will bear the consequences. There's this 10%, I'm not saying fringe element, but 10% of the population that feels threatened enough or terrorized enough, or let's say that 10% feels more terrorized than the 90% of the population that they leave their home country and they seek asylum in foreign countries. Let's say they're going to a Western government. The Western government acknowledges the fact that the foreign government is not good. They're trying to persecute those citizens. So the Western government uh, tries to be this savior who then allows them, allows the immigrants asylum, that processes their case and gives them some temporary status and even permanent status and citizenship eventually. So that asylum for political and religious purposes from draconian foreign government exists. But when it comes to financial asylum, there is no such provision. So what do, let's say, people from certain countries who feel financially terrorized, what is the asylum process for them? Well, there isn't a traditional or typical asylum process, unfortunately. And that is where the plan B is a makeshift asylum. And this has to be done before the persecution kicks in, right? Before it's too late. It's very important. And I'm not saying that mistakes are going to happen. I'm not even going to say that persecution could happen. But because there's that heavy penalty for any mistake, right? It's always good to be proactive and take your steps and secure as many plan Bs as possible. So you have your pathway to that financial asylum as and when you need it. It's ready you all you need to do is pick it up and exercise your options there's several countries now how do you target so many options right you can't be a citizen of every single country in the world so there's only a finite number of countries that will give you this and you you, you want quality options you want finite limited quality options the quantity matters you want to get as many of these quality options as possible in place the more you have the more secure you are the more you have the more stronger your plan b portfolio is so when you are approaching these different golden opportunities or options you look at different continents and pick the best of the best the cream let's start off with the africas now if you are interested in picking up citizenship from the Africas, what are some of the options that are even possible? One clear option that leads to citizenship is South Africa, a great African nation. 
a lot of people complain it's unsafe and all of that kind of crazy crap uh you know everything is unsafe at the same time nothing is unsafe right? it's all perspective a lot of people call mexico unsafe i feel it's one of the safest countries in north america the safest countries in north america in a lot of aspects so um, south africa is pretty cool it's pretty nice uh, it's a flexible residency option so you feel threatened you don't feel safe in certain times so or you can always uh we use it wisely permanent residency for $6,800, which can then lead to citizenship of very flexible permanent residency. If you missed my coverage on South Africa, you can return and take a look at this video. This talks about the entire option in a lot of detail. You can always click the link in the description, book a call with us, and we can connect you with our legal team who processes the whole South African option in South Africa. The second quality option uh, is uh, Mauritius. The Mauritian passport is much better than any other African passport. It is the strongest passport in Africa's. That's a very uh, economical route as well to get started. The three options, uh, two of the options are $1,000 to the government and then there's some lawyer fees and processing fees. Uh, the other option is 375K in property investment. And if you have missed my coverage on Mauritius, you can always return and take a look at this video. This talks about the entire Mauritian option in a lot of detail. So that's the Africas. There are two or three other hidden gems in the Africas like Gambia, Tanzania, Zanzibar option. So that, that there's a few options out there, not for everyone. Those are exclusively for certain type of use cases. Now, if you shift focus to the Latin, you have, um, you obviously have Mexico and the North Americas. Again, a great, one of the best plan B uh, residencies and one of the best passports that you can obtain. Then you have multiple options like Brazil, Argentina, Dominican Republic, Uruguay, Paraguay, Chile. There's just so many exotic passport opportunities in the Latin Americas. My channel covers most of these opportunities. You can take a look at my videos. You can browse the library for whichever option excites you. You can always reach us and then we can get you started. Uh, if you look at uh, the Middle East, you have Turkey, Jordan, and Egypt that offer direct citizenship routes. You have Cambodia, which is a direct citizenship route. And if you have missed the countries that sell these passport, I have ranked all of these options. There are 11 countries that sell their passport outright and I've ranked these in terms of the least to the highest order in my opinion and my analysis. If you have missed that very important coverage, make sure to return and take a look at this link. This talks about all the options around the globe that directly sell their passport. All right, I hope you liked this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up, make sure you're subbed and catch you in the next one.